being able to paint beautiful water reflections of river bank on your landscapes just really adds to the excitement and drama. And what I've done here is I've just quickly put in a little bit of a mass of uh, foliage color here so we can add the water line, we can add the reflections and the river bank and just show you how easy that is to do. I'm going to start here with a one inch brush and I already have it loaded with a little bit of that dark color. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it down. I pull it down a little bit just to kind of match the height up here. And then we have the larger brush as we move down further. So it's very important to get lots of this color down. Once you've got it down, just take a clean two inch brush and stroke horizontally from the outside edge of the shadowed area deep into the shadows. Now already, it's looking like a fabulous reflection. But let's put the riverbank in before we actually go to the water. I'm going to use number 10 palette knife. You notice it has two areas on it, two painting areas. One is the long edge and the other one is the short edge. I'm also going to use two different colors. One is a Van Dyke Brown, which is a very dark brown, and the other one is a dark sienna mixed with a little bit of white just to lighten it up for the reflection. Now what I'm doing here is I'm taking the Van Dyke Brown, pulling it down, and cutting so I have a small roll of paint. In fact, I can even add a little bit more if I want it to. A small roll of paint right there on my knife's edge. Straight across is the stroke. So I'll start deep in the wood and I'll move straight across. The sharper the angle downward, the deeper the cleft. So I want to make sure that I'm going fairly straight. This is just a small little river bank that's just right at the edge of the vegetation is. And in fact, I'll even show you how to bring the vegetation right on it. Now I'm going to load up with that lighter mixture, the same color that we had just mixed up, load it up in the same way, and now it's so important. See how I'm holding my finger on that knife? Very lightly around this metal ferrule. I have a thumb and forefinger, no pressure. So I just glide it over. Very lightly. See it break up? Okay, that's what we want to do. If you want it a little bit darker, just glaze it again because it'll pick up the color surrounding and underneath and blend it in with the color that's on the knife. Once you're satisfied with that, then the next thing to do is just take a small number three fan brush, just like the one I'm pulling up right here, and we'll go to the back of the land, and that gets rid of that back edge. And you'd want to match whatever color you're using. Right now I've got nothing but dark greens, and I'm just going to go ahead and use that to match it up. So now we've got a river bank with some nice growy green things coming right on top of it. Now let's put the highlights on the bushes as well as into the reflected water. For that, I'm going to use this dirty brush. The first thing is load it with some medium. Now I'll go ahead and dunk it right into some liquid white. And then I'll work this liquid white in. You'll see this quite a bit on our foliage tape where we talk about how to do bushes and trees and gre other green growing things. And, but the important thing here is I just want to show you how you can combine the loading of those brushes and the colors you select with doing some beautiful water reflection. Let's come up here. And again, as I explained, I lift up slightly, just touch the outside point, and press until the bristles underneath that brush tip make contact with the canvas. Now what's so important, and if you're going to have this reflected, is that as you go from bush to bush to bush to bush, you're going to change the color. So it's important that whatever you do on Tom, you also do in the reflection. I'm just going to add a little bit more there. And there we go. Just add it underneath. And you don't have to be perfect. That's the main thing I want you to understand 
You do not have to be perfect. Just get the color kind of in the right area. So we'll just go ahead now and start to add some more color. I'm adding a little more sap green to whatever the green mixture was. And I'm going to come right in here. And we'll just, whatever you do on top, you also do underneath. Now, let's add some more. Maybe different yellows and greens together. It doesn't matter which ones I'm using. All you want to know is that they're getting different as you go along. So we'll go ahead and we'll do this one right up here. Now, this one tells me, wow, what if it had flowers on? How would I handle that? You go into the woods and a lot of these have flowers on them. Well, I just take a little bit of white here and I'll show you. And this white will come as bright, but we'll just put some flowers. Flowers in your hair. There we go. It's not wanting to cooperate much today. There we go. We're getting some more. And uh, if at first it doesn't stick, add some thinner, add some liquid white or clear to it, and it will soften up and then start to really stick. I like it when a plan comes together. And with that, I'll go ahead and take some of that and put it right down in my reflection because whatever I do on the top, I also need to do down here. Now, it seems to me it would be kind of nice if we had a little bit of red. So let's put a little bit of red, say, down around in this area. And we can easily go back to some other greens if you'd like. And I'll just add a little bit of red right now to my brush. One of the most red is one of the most powerful things you can add in foliage. Okay, just don't make it super bright red and you'll be just great. But look what it does in the reflection. That doesn't tie your reflection to what's happening above. Nothing ever will. So you can see we've got a lot of multiple colored bushes going along. Let's go ahead and get some others. How about something that's a little more on the golden orange side? There we are. There it is. Whoa, what a beautiful little bush is coming to play right here. Uh, we'll just go ahead and put it on the reverse side as well. And that gives us room for one more nice little green bush. And then we'll show you the most amazing thing of all, which is actually turning that color underneath into a reflection. Now we just look like we have an upside down bowl, flower bowl, if you will. There it is, going way out there. Let's put something else here on the inside. Now, the moment of truth. So I'm going to use a two inch brush, just like this. And just a little hair and some air. Just pull it down. Pull it down. Pull it down. Pull it down. And now straight across. That is the most remarkable way we have of creating reflected colors. And then to just top it off, we're going to take our knife and put a small amount of the liquid white on it. We have some liquid white right here. All I'm going to do is take a small amount and come right up here. And now I'm going to work this in. Reload. And there it is. And with that, you have a beautiful reflection of all of the bright sun colors of summer and fall.